Hey guys, in the past few weeks, there have been a lot of what security researchers called uh, zero day vulnerabilities or zero day attacks or zero day exploits being actively used. Microsoft and Atlassian is currently battling one right now as we speak. And I thought I would make a video about explaining what a zero day exploit actually is because the name is very, you know, it's very catchy and very, you know, scary zero day attack. What does that mean? And it's always personally, you know, confused me for the longest time, zero day. And for any any other video that I make in this channel, if I make a video about it, that means I at one point was confused about this topic and I wanted to make a video about it. Keep it as an archive so that uh, I can reference this video in the future in case I talk about uh, this uh, zero day attacks. And this is what I do on this channel. If you're new here, I talk about security vulnerabilities. I talk about outages. I talk about, uh, you know, uh, backend stuff. That's basically my, my specialty here in this channel. So network, database stuff, security, all that jazz. Let's jump into it. In order to talk about what a zero day vulnerability is, we need to talk about the security researcher's job. So as a security researcher, you basically work day and night to Pick the current active software out there, Microsoft, Google, pick any software you want, Amazon, and then try to find any possible attack vector on the latest software, you know, that will lead to a remote code execution, prototype pollution, uh, cross-site scripting, server-side re request forgery, any attack, you know, that you can think of. And then you try to possible find your way through certain input that to actually reproduce a vulnerability and once you find it you responsibly do privately to the company and says hey i'm a security researcher this is a uh, this is my job and i found a vulnerability in your latest software version blah 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 and i found uh, an http smuggling attack for example and uh, here's how we reproduce it and and the company will come back and says okay this sounds like a um a uh, high serious vulnerability did you see this by any chance actively being used outside and the company also will will have obviously try to check that if it's being actively used right and the security researcher will say uh no no i didn't see any source code of this company of, the, of this vulnerability i didn't see anything really i don't think anybody's using this i think I, i'm the first one who found this so microsoft or the company here or google will say uh, okay Please give us 14 days to release a patch before you publicly release this information to the public, you know, and talk about it. Like, just give us some time. And so this is called, in this case, 14-day vulnerability or 14-day exploit, right? So they have 14 day to develop a patch, to develop a fix for that software to actually release it to the public. And then after that, you're free to talk about it, right? Just from an ethical perspective here, not legal, you can you don't don't share the source code of how here's how you do it. It's kind of it's not nice, you know. It's like you're putting a company in danger at the, the, the end of the day. So this is the good scenario. The the bad scenario where if the security researcher actually found a vulnerability, but then while looking, they found a source code that actually does exactly reproduce that case. It's public. Someone actually posted it to GitHub or some other sites, right? And also, or maybe they found a leaked database, and this is the only one of the only path that this leaked database might have extracted because of this vulnerability. So they will go to the company and say, hey, company, uh, I found a bug. I found a vulnerability, but uh, actually, I'm sorry to, uh, to let you know, this is actually actively being used in the wild. So I'm sorry, guys, but you have zero days to fix this. Thus the name zero day vulnerability or zero day exploit. Being exploited, this at the vulnerability is being exploited is going to call, be called zero day attack, right? So Microsoft or Google or any company in this case have zero days to fix this patch. They have literally, they have to provide a workaround right now. They have to drop everything. They don't have time because it's being actively used. This is the most dangerous one. This is the nastiest one, obviously. And there is a, th th that's why you see most of the uh, articles talk about zero day attack because they are dangerous and, and uh, they're kind of clickbaity if you think about it as well. And uh, the problem with news sites, they sometimes they label zero day attacks 
as zero day when they are not. And that's kind of, you know, not nice because like you're clickbaiting effectively because that, no, this is not a zero day. Nobody knew about this. There is no proof that nobody, anyone knew about this. There was, yes, we ha- we knew about this a month ago and then we released a patch after a few days. And then now we talk about it. So why do you say this is a zero day? This is not a zero day attack. This is actually a patch. And then it's publicly known. Now, now, now after the fact, if this is publicly known, and then a source code to actively exploit the attack was discovered, this is not in this case a zero day. Because, hey, a patch is there. A fix is there. A workaround is there. Does that make sense? So that's how I understand zero day. Right? And perhaps you guys have another explanation that is better or easier. Let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.